Eva, a mother living alone after her son Kevin has caused a devastating impact which has disturbed the community by going on a killing spree with his archery bow at high school, must endure the consequences of her own son's actions, the resentment and fury of a community which has suffered at his hateful hands. Struggling to cope, Eva reflects on her past in a blurring of present day events and memories to see what exactly went wrong with her son, uncovering a dysfunctional, bitter mother-son relationship that begs the eternal question of child rearing. What causes a child to be bad? Nurture or nature? This is Lynn Ramsey's We Need to Talk About Kevin, starring Tilda Swinton as Eva, John C. Riley as Franklin, Eva's husband and Kevin's father, and Ezra Miller as Kevin. The film is adapted from Lionel Shriver's novel of the same name, and while the high school massacre portrayed within its narrative is fictitious, it is dreadfully upsetting that such a narrative event can bring images, thoughts and memories of real life high school shootings. The subject matter is disturbing, but we need to talk about Kevin aims to present the viewer with enough information that they can consider whether nature or nurture leads someone down the wrong paths. Eva and Kevin's relationship has often been one led by anger, bitterness, jealousy and resentment. When Eva decorates a home office with maps on the wall connecting the room to her fascination for travel, Kevin calls it stupid, eventually spraying the walls with muck, causing his mother great distress while he gains a satisfaction from her suffering. In contrast, Eva has also demonstrated when she has been in the wrong, allowing her anger to get the better of her. Trying to teach Kevin about sums, she becomes irritable over his incessant reciting of numbers, prompting her to write down a sum he can't solve. He throws the paper away and poops his pants on cue, making her change his diaper. He has a sense of satisfaction seeing his mother serve under him in this manner, and once he is changed, he poops himself again. Eva throws Kevin to the wall, breaking Kevin's arm. After being tended to by a doctor, not having told anybody of how he truly broke his arm, Kevin knows this can be leverage against his mother to get what he wants and to strike fear into her, knowing that he can eventually tell others that Eva is not a safe mother for him. The film establishes and details thoroughly how Eva and Kevin's relationship is highly dysfunctional, leading to these difficult sources of conflict that parents don't typically have with their children. Kevin is overwhelming to Eva, and Eva is like also frustrated by the fact that whenever she tries to tell Franklin about issues she and Kevin are having, Franklin believes there is just a misunderstanding at hand. Maybe he's right to an extent. If Eva were more tolerant of Kevin's needs, would he grow up to be the resentful young adult he became? Eva's frustrations with Kevin begin early on. During her pregnancy with Kevin, as other mothers seemed enthusiastic for parenthood, Eva does not share such joy. This could be postnatal depression, a form of depression that parents can have after childbirth. Eva does not share Franklin's joy in Kevin's birth, and this emotional distance seems to set the tone for Eva and Kevin's relationship. Nobody is at blame for having depression, and Eva shows signs of depression, struggling to cope with parenthood early on when, as Kevin cries and unable to get him to rest, she visits a construction site just to drown out the sounds of his cries. An abrasive sound such as drilling causing a momentary solace from the crying sound that is often suggested to trigger an instinctive maternal reaction, as if the drill is more soothing than the cries. In this stage, Eva is struggling to cope and is deserving of additional support. These earlier scenes demonstrate that Eva does struggle emotionally and may not be aware of the best path towards a sense of resolution. This struggle does form into a resentment of Kevin in scenes such as when she flings him to the ground, breaking his arm. A scene brought up like a memory flash as Kevin strokes his scar during prison visiting hours, telling his mother that that scar is the most honest thing she has ever done. Maybe Kevin is right, because within that moment of breaking Kevin's arm, her resentment was no longer under any veil. She allowed her feelings of him to be known in that moment. In Peter Bradshaw's review of We Need to Talk About Kevin, he writes that plenty of kids act up. Did Eva go wrong? Was it with bedtime stories about Robin Hood that encouraged his interest in archery? Or in dangerously teasing Kevin about being obviously impressed with the big photo of her in the bookstore window? Or did he just 
just generally inhale her miasma of resentment, her own physiological disenchantment with motherhood itself? A brilliantly extreme parable, operatically pessimistic. In the end, the audience is left with the same unanswerable question. What made Kevin do it? Nature or nurture? A mother supplies both. With hindsight, either and likely the viewer can consider what could have changed to avoid Kevin going down the path of a killing spree at high school. What if his interest in archery wasn't nurtured? What if Eva didn't learn to cope with things through resentment? Have these aspects had an influence on how Kevin reacts to the world around him? Peter Bradshaw suggests that Eva isn't without blame for Kevin's actions. Her struggles with parenthood and her reliance on resentment to handle difficult matters has had its influence on Kevin. Eva would never have wanted one of her children to murder people of course, but Kevin had adopted a misanthropic perspective of the world and all within it due to experiencing clear resentment from their own mother. Eva may have unintentionally influenced Kevin's actions, but she is also a victim herself. Kevin kills his father Franklin and his younger sister before fulfilling the final murderous action at the high school, leaving their bodies dead in the garden for Eva to discover. She has lost loved ones to Kevin's rampage and now, living alone in a small home, struggles to cope with the mourning of such a loss. She continues to wear Franklin's Led Zeppelin t-shirt to remember him, even as their marriage became rocky with discussions of divorce. Eva always loved Franklin and ironing Kevin's t-shirts, she places them away in his bedroom which has been decorated exactly like his childhood bedroom in their previous home. Struggling with this loss, she is also the target of communal hatred. As her home is vandalised, she is harassed and intimidated publicly for all to see. Eva, again, is struggling to cope, but instead of dealing with the challenge of parenthood, it is now the challenge of immeasurable loss, her own personal loss, and the community's loss. As she continues to visit Kevin in prison, who, about to turn 18, will be transferred to a large state prison, she seeks some closure. Why did Kevin do it? He thought he knew, but now he doesn't. It's maybe an unsatisfying end, that the deaths could have been avoided, but Kevin is reflective of Eva's incapability to cope. Kevin doesn't know how to funnel emotions, thoughts, or ideas into anything other than a destructive resentment, which has taken him beyond the point of return. As Eva and Kevin are the only surviving members of their family, their dysfunction living on, it also should be a time to reflect. What led them here? Nurture? Nature? For them to overcome this inability to handle their resentments, they need to confront them. In conclusion, Lynn Ramsey's We Need to Talk About Kevin is an intelligent study on the balance of nurture and nature while parenting, and how they can contribute to the extremes of an individual's outlook. We Need to Talk About Kevin isn't an exploration of the clear-cut black and white. It is too simple to suggest Kevin was born with malicious intent, and it is too straightforward to suggest Eva is simply a bad mother. She had made very clear efforts to connect with Kevin. Lynn Ramsey's adaptation attempts to examine this difficult, dysfunctional relationship and provide the viewer with a reflection. We might not see how or why, but our actions will influence our young for better or for much worse. Thank you.